exciting. Uh, thank you again, Kay. And I will, I will stop talking so that we can see what questions we have for you now. It looks like Alan has his hand up. Oh. Alan. Alan. Oh, I, there you go. There we you can go. hear you. Okay. Um, well, um, my wife and I have made what I would aptly describe, I think, as the pilgrimage to Louis Braille's birth home. Mm -hmm. Um, Monsieur Marie was absolutely wonderful when we went. We spent a great deal of time. Uh, he spent a great deal of time with us asking us about how we use Braille. Um, I, couldn't have, I couldn't have carried out my profession without it. I was a translator for three years before I became a conference interpreter. And I could never have done this without Braille. And it also helped me when I decided I wanted to learn Spanish later on. So I can write Braille in three languages now. So um, I'm, I loved your presentation. I'd like to know why AR is your favorite contraction. <laughs> oh, I have a lot of reasons. The, the, uh, the real one, since we're telling real things now, uh, is that my first Braille class that I took, uh, they were having trouble with AR. And so just I just said, well, how can you have trouble with that? It's my favorite contraction. And it made them all learn AR uh, because they thought, why is AR? So we analyzed it and, and it just, it was just frankly, kind of a lark. I do love AR, but uh, it's kind of, I've, I've used it with uh, children and they all have a favorite contraction. Looks like Kim Kirk Kilpatrick. Do you mind if I call out the names of people? Absolutely. No, that's fine. No, if you can absolutely. see the list. Absolutely. I'm on mute. Am I on mute? No, yeah, you're, you're good. Okay, good. Um, my question is, and, and I was horrified to know about the brailler on the high shelf. I'm <laughs> really, really sad. Um, and I'm, I too, like Alan, I'm a lifelong braille reader. Couldn't live without braille. I wonder if you have any tips for um, promoting braille all along the path. Uh, for people because I, I'm always sort of appalled to hear that parents don't learn Braille and these people don't know Braille and my mom learned Braille with me and I, it made a huge difference in the house and everything. So just wonder, like, are there any tips you would give people to make sure the Braille is uh, is all over the place for for everybody learning Braille? Well, I think the first thing that we need to do is to make sure that everybody knows how they can get Braille. You know, so that um, I, I think one of the challenges is um, access. And so if we, uh, if we make sure that parents have access to Braille children's books that they read, read to the child. And um, so I think that's really great. And even things like... Um, um, braille labels and and other things uh having support classes um francis mary's talking about in the chat just enough to know better is a book for parents from the national braille press um so having access and not feeling like you have to do it all by yourself um setting up this community braille course is um is going to be really valuable for that so I, I, I think we also have to embrace that as, as a job for us. Um, I love talking about Braille. In fact, I think sometimes people get a little tired of, uh, yes, Kay, we know you're always going to say something about Braille when this comes up, but uh, this is general in the general public. But um, yeah, it's a good question and something that we should maybe have a little task force about, Natalie. Definitely. So the next person I saw was Marcy. Marcy. Yes, Maurice uh, K. Oh, um, I just um, I was actually surprised that you mentioned okay. that um, pre Braille was kind of I'll say obsolete. Maybe that's not the right word, but um, but it, you know I thought about it. it. It actually makes sense. Do we do we show our sighted children how to pre write? Yeah. Not necessarily, no. right? So yeah. I think. Um, I think it's a good idea. I mean, we've we've all seen some 
I mean, I've, I've done pre-Braille as a child, but um, I think that, you know, the earlier we can get Braille to give Braille to a student or a, a child, the better. I mean, um, same same goes for sighted, sighted children, right? So uh, right. Thanks, th thanks for that tip. I mean, that was a that was a uh, thought um, an, an eye opener for me, for sure. Well, thank you. And, you know, we're we're among friends here. And so it's kind of one of those things we just talk about. What does that mean, really? I mean, what are, what message are we um, are we giving? One of the messages is you kind of have to pass through pre Braille before you get to Braille. So there's this barrier to get to Braille. And so um, I, you know, I hesitate telling people you're certainly not wrong in. Um, we're not wrong in focusing on the skills that you focus on that used to traditionally be called pre-Braille, but uh, the pre-Braille label is challenging. So thank you for very much. Tracy? That was I, good, yeah. Um, what do you mean by pre-Braille? I've been blind, well, since the age of two and I learned Braille in grade one. Um, I knew my print letters first, but what do you mean by pre-Braille? I've never heard of that. Yeah, usually people are talk, talk about pre-Braille when they're talking about things like tactile exploration, tactile demos, uh, discrimination, um, tactile, uh, like tracking maybe. So you're not actually looking at Braille cells, you're just looking at, you know, a line of Braille. Um, and so it's the, it's, it's kind of fragmented skills that then allow the child to explore the braille cell when we decide to give it to them, which should be a lot earlier than, than if you. Yeah. See, I, I don't, I don't like that. To me, that's not pre braille. That, I, that, <laughs> that's totally, I think the wrong term because it's, it's learning your environment. It's learning to use your touch, but it's not. Right. And, I and I, I think that I, was, it bothers me. Yeah. Well, it's the same here. I mean, that was my point. We don't, we don't pre braille. I don't, I, I, I actually can't imagine something that is pre-Braille, so. Okay, thank you, go ahead. Diana? Uh, Hi, yes. Diana. Uh, hello. Hi. Um, I just got asked, or I, I'm volunteering to work with a child who is um, in grade five and taken Braille since kindergarten. And she hates Braille and isn't reading at her grade level, which is totally not unsurprising to me. <laughs> if, I don't exactly know. She's refusing to read or to write. And she has, um, she's got a vision teacher who goes, who, who's very positive about Braille. In fact, that's why they brought me in because they wanted another Braille user to mentor her. So um, we've started, and I wrote her a letter and have sent her a recipe. And uh, I don't know if she's received it because it was snail mail, of course. And her, I sent a print copy to her mother. I mean, we've had one discussion, but I, I'm trying to figure out why she is so resistant. Um, her, tea, her mother, says maybe we sh they should hold her back in school because obviously she's Thomas. not where she is. Join the meeting. But no teacher wants, the teachers don't want to do that. Part of me says, well, that'd be interesting. It would be kind of a consequence. But I also don't think anybody's forcing or really pushing her to read. She just refuses. So I'm not quite sure what to do with this. <laughs> I know we're running out of time, Diana, and this is a huge question. Um, but my, um, uh, Alan Koenig, who coined the blame the child syndrome, uh, also used to say attitudes are not developed in a, in a vacuum. And exactly. so I, I would want to really look. I, I, I certainly am not willing to blame anybody else, but what messages is she getting? What, what, what are we really saying to her about Braille? And how fragmented is her instruction? Does she have consistent, ongoing, uh, direct instruction by a qualified teacher of the visually impaired? And if not, then that fragmentation of instruction 
I, it would make me hate something. So. Yeah, me too. Yeah. No, she is definitely a qualified teacher. I know that for sure. Well, but and, how, uh, how much time? I, I haven't asked the teacher. So that's a good question. I can do that. The other thing I've done is started talking to the mom over email and, um, you know, trying to get her engaged in, in this whole process. Because I know she doesn't know Braille. And like Kim, my mother learned Braille. And I was the only one at school who got Braille letters that I could, that read and that they didn't have, and I could send them and they didn't have to be interlined. And that made me proud because my mom could read. Okay, thanks very much. I do want to, I know it's, I know it's at time for us to take a break, but I do want to respond to something that was in the comment um, about using the term tactile awareness instead of pre-Braille. And I do like the word tactile awareness, but the point is I want to make sure that regardless of what you call this, you don't use that as something that has to be passed or, um, or mastered before you get to Braille. So tactile awareness as a part of the introduction to Braille, of early introduction of Braille uh, is great. And I, I, I like that, um, that term as well, but uh, no, nothing that means that we're going to withhold Braille before you pass something else. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, so. All right, Natalie, thank you. It's, uh, I think it's time for our break. Thank you so much, Kay. And if I may, I would like to ask just a final quick question. Um, because we have so many people here today, we've talked, several people have already talked about the role of parents. Um, and I, I know I was very, um, I feel very grateful that my parents showed an interest in, in Braille literacy as well when I was young. But I wonder if you have any words to share, a message or advice to share for classroom teachers um, and, and what you would want them to know if they're working with a student who is a Braille reader. You know, that's a huge uh, question, Natalie. Um, I, uh, I, I guess my, I, I hate to start out with don'ts, but um, I, I guess my, the, the thing that I would be most concerned about is that the child would be seen as outside of the class and that they would not be fully included. So if a, ch a classroom teacher is committed to, full, to fully include a child, that will necessitate working with the teacher of students with visual impairments to make sure that Braille is um, deeply included in the classroom. And so I think it's, it's a difference between this is your child, you'll deal with Braille, you'll do it, and this is our child. And so um, that, that would go for all members of the educational team as well. But um, yeah, we have, uh, we have fantastic classroom teachers working with us and we have some that have, that have some challenges as well, so. Thank you so much, Kay. 